computer. Mm -hmm. You are using the computer audio. No. <laughs> Click the, um, scroll down to the bottom. There you go. See the mute? The little arrow down there is where you can check in. Microphone Yeti. There you go. There you and are. speakers Yeti. Speakers Yeti. Perfect. Perfect. Now there should be a little chat box thing at the bottom. Uh -huh. There you go. So now when people come on, you'll be able to see. Did you put my headphones? Did I? Do I need some? No, <laughs> <laughs> no right in your nose, Chris. I can edit all this right. <laughs> it just looks dark right well i am like not um yeah uh can't hear you I was checking to see if it was just Okay, guys, we're trying to figure out. All right, so they can't hear, but it's showing that there is. I mean, like the. the I turned that off. That's, but I think that's it for the headphones. Oh, okay. Okay, hit the mute. You want to hit the mute button and see if they can hear now? Okay, we're starting to see Melissa. Linda Breast said, I hear you. Laura Lynn said, I hear you. There you go, I can hear you. Awesome. We're using a new live stream tonight, guys. So, um, grace for us while we figure this out tonight. Are we good? Can they hear me? I, are we still good, guys? Can we get some confirmation? The light is solid. I know. Oh, I, you hit it again? Yeah, I did. Uh, yes, all good. Okay. Laura, thumbs Linda. up. Yep. Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, whoever said happy Father's Day. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, welcome, guys. Um, I'm excited to show you guys how to do these gorgeous epoxy resin coasters. I thought, how cute would these be for a gift? A housewarming gift or um, maybe if you have a shop or a booth um, these could be sold as, as smalls um, and they're just so cute I just love them like and Doc couldn't believe when I showed him um, the pictures of them how awesome that they looked didn't you think they were you thought they were big pictures right yeah when you sent them to me I was like what and then when I walked <laughs> in the door I was like oh wait <laughs> yeah so I've done a couple other pieces you can see behind me um, on wood um, I am officially addicted to epoxy resin I love it um, and I'm excited to show you guys how to do it and um, even more excited about future tutorials on doing it on furniture so because furniture is my jam right um, so maybe this is your first time with me welcome my name is Amy Murray and my website is amymurray.com we actually uh, retail this epoxy resin that I'm gonna show you how to work with tonight. So we do have the uh, resin in stock and we also have a ton of different uh, 
pigment powders, which I'm going to show you guys how to use tonight. So make sure that you check that out. Um, you can use code epoxy resin 10 for $10 off your first purchase of epoxy resin from us. So that's exciting. Can I type that in there? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Is it lowercase? Uh, yes. Epoxy. E epoxy resin 10 gives them $10 off. Okay, so let me go through this setup uh, of exactly what I have here. So first things first, I have epoxy resin. Okay, it is uh, one part hardener, one part resin. I have four, four by four tiles. Now, I did find these on Amazon, uh, but we bought these at the Home Depot. They were like 17 cents a piece. I have a bunch of 30 mil little cups. These are like little medicine cups you use for your kids. I actually have one set here to set the coasters on, and then I have a set over here for the actual resin to go in. I have an eight ounce um, cup, plastic cup. This is gonna, this is how I'm gonna measure the resin, and I have a stir stick for that. I have itty bitty stir sticks for the little ones. And I have gloves. I have a cheap hair dryer I got at the dollar store because I was not about to use my really good hair dryer. I have a little spray bottle with uh, rubbing alcohol in it. Uh, this is like the 90, the 91 percent. Blue shop towels. And I have a torch, which it's questionable whether Doc should let me use or not. Something to light the torch with, with. And a level. Okay, so I've already went through. Now this is really important, okay? Because you have to, epoxy resin self levels. So you have to make sure that the space that you're working on is completely level. I have shims over here. I'm not sure if you can see them. They're sitting over here. Um, and I've just went through all four ways on this uh, little board that I have here and made sure it's all even. So even here, even this way, even on the back side, even over here, because I don't want all the resin to run to one side. Okay. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and we're just gonna get right into this because I'm excited. Okay, so I'm gonna set these up on the little cups. I'm not going to put them perfect because you're gonna see I'm gonna use them. Um, if they're a little staggered, that's gonna be good. I actually need more. I miscalculated. I didn't say I was wrong. I said I miscalculated. I knew you got excited there for a second. No, no. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> okay. Now, I went ahead. Um, I kind of planned out what colors I wanted to use. So... On the sides right here, I went ahead and took a gold leaf marker. This is just a gold leaf paint marker that I got at um, Hobby Lobby. And I put gold around all the edges. I, when I first did the coasters, I did not, um, I did not think about how I was going to finish them. I was just excited to do it. And so, you know, as you, as you do things, you learn and, and you get better. And I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and just prep the sides because as you can see, I went ahead and finished these sides and the bottom, but this is what it looks like before I did that. So you can kind of see um, there's a bunch of resin kind of on the bottom and the sides just don't look pretty. So, Think about that beforehand.
because it's a lot easier to do it now than to do it after. Okay, so we have these set up and I'm gonna go ahead and measure out my resin. So I know that I'm gonna need 30 ounces of clear for each one of these, okay? And then I know I'm going to do three colors, which I'll, we'll talk about the colors here in a second. And I wanted to do, and they, you do not need very much of the color. Um, so I'm gonna do 12 and a half milliliters for each one of the colors. So no, I- Can you say the ounces? Oh, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry. It's 30 mil, it's not 30 ounces. Um, so I have mils on this cup, and so I calculated that I was gonna need 157, so I'm gonna go ahead and do 160 mils. I'm gonna mix it up, so 80 part resin and 80 part a pop, um, hardener. How? Can't talk. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put gloves on for this. Now, um, resin is really sticky, uh, but one of the tricks that I have found is that uh, the rubbing alcohol will actually remove um, epoxy resin, which is why I have a spray bottle and the blue shop towels, because I can wipe off if I get it somewhere because it's really sticky. And you want to do your hardener first. It's a little bit more, it's a little thinner. Okay, so how many did I say, Nate? 160, right? 80 and 80. 80 and 80. And there's no eight, it goes 70 and 90. So I have to, you wanna be exact at least as much as possible, because if you're not, epoxy resin won't set up. You'll have like, it'll just never get hard. It'll just be sticky. There's that one. And now I'm gonna get the resin. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. It is a lot thicker. And these cups, once you get it in the cup, it's very, um, uh, the lines, it's, it's uh, a little more difficult to see. I've seen some people mix it like one part, like they measure it each in two cups and then pour one into the other, but I, bless you, um, I just can't see how you would get the exact amount. Do you know what I mean? Because some would stick in the... Yeah, unless you scrape it up. Yeah. Okay. So once you have it measured, then you have to stir it for three minutes straight. Okay. You want to stir it kind of slow. The faster you stir it, the more bubbles you're going to have in it, and the faster it hardens. So you'll have less working time. You're, you're something else. What? <laughs> You 
you want to make sure that you continuously scrape down the sides. Hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Okay, I started a three minute timer. <coughs> Okay, while I'm stirring, let's talk about the pigment powders. So they come in three different, um, there's three different kinds. There's a, uh, a solid metallic, there's a translucent metallic, and then there's a glitter metallic. And so I try to choose uh, one of each. The regular metallic, of course, is gonna be um, the color is going to be a little bit more rich and the translucent is, um, it's great for like accents. So I've chosen an opal, which is a, a white. It's going to complement the base of the tiles. And then I've done a metallic blue and gold, gold glitter. So I have one of each. And now there's a ton of colors on my website. And a little bit goes a long way, guys. So they do come in these, um, these little packs. You will get a ton of use out of them. This is kind of the boring part, mixing. You may want to go ahead and just move them in closer and tilt that down. And if you want to go ahead and move these tiles out of the way, This facing down, or you just want the in and tilted. Um, if you come in and then tilt it down so they can see the tops, cool. you don't have to worry about getting. Oh, there's a mirror. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to fill up all four of these cups with clear, yeah. And then I'm going to fill up just a tiny little bit over here in each of these cups for the color. Sorry, I'm just trying to get 
great. Okay, I have some extra, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these up a little bit more. Okay, I'll just set that aside. Now, we're gonna mix up our color. So this is the blue. This one is called Atlantis. We're just gonna take our little popsicle stick and you don't need very much. So there's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and just stir it up real quick. Stir really slow because the powder will kind of um, kind of explode on you a little bit. But then you'll have pigment powder everywhere, all over you. Um, and make sure that you stir it really, really well because you don't want any powder not to be dissolved in the resin. This uh, translucent white is called opal. So as I've been learning um, resin, art and learning how to work with it. One of the things that has been frustrating me on YouTube is that no one's really giving super clear instructions on measuring. And so I'm hoping that this tutorial will help. Okay, so now we've got gold glitter. I'm going to put a little bit more in because I want this to be um, pretty strong. That's a really bright gold. I love it. I'm just gonna give these just a quick stir again. Okay, so I have one little stick that I haven't used yet, and I'm gonna show you what it's for. I'm gonna flip all of these over. Okay, and then I'm going to just let the clear resin go on top. And then I'm gonna use this stick, just like I was kind of icing a popsicle, or ice, icing a popsicle, icing a cookie or a cupcake. I'm just gonna kind of move it around and let it self level. I'm not pushing it over the edge. I'm just kind of smoothing it all out. I know I say funny stuff when I'm on video. And once I get it smoothed out, then I'll let it run over. It's not, um, it's a totally different art form than painting because you're really allowing the product to do the majority of the work for you.
like that. A little carving knife would work well. The, for that. the problem is, is that it gets the resin all over it. You're not answering question. Hmm? You're not answering question, okay? We can, I can. It's fine. Uh, you meant ask what's the open slash work time once harden, hardener is mixed with resin. So I found that um, around 20 minutes is is the sweet spot that you have. Um, actually, kind of screwed up a piece because I kept going and didn't stop it it's you really have to know when to quit on these i'm going to go ahead and get the bubbles out of the clear here this is where doc gets worried about me i'm getting better though you can get just a little torch you don't have to get a big torch but This is Docs from the garage. <laughs> I melted the uh, plastic onto the last one I did. Okay, perfect. So right now we've just got like this is our base. Okay. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I feel like I need to stand for this part. So. Uh, so I'm just gonna be totally random. I'm just gonna take the stick and let it come all the way across and then I'm gonna go to another color. <laughs> I'm just gonna follow that same path. Okay, and now I'm gonna get the translucent opal. Now, this is the fun part. Okay, so I've got my dollar store hair dryer. Watch this. Okay, so I've just kind of moved it around and I'm gonna go back in and we're gonna put a little bit more. So now I'm gonna hit this up here. Maybe make that one a little bit thicker. Do that one on the corner. Oh, 
right? And what I love about the translucent whites is if you take it straight down the center of where you're leaving your, um, kind of like your white space, you'll get even more contrast. But that gold looks really cool over here. Okay, let's do it again. I really love that one. We're not, we're not messing with it. And this is where it gets really hard guys. Cause you could just keep going. <laughs> you're just layering on more color. It almost needs to be on high in order to get it to move. Okay, and this is where you go, I'm going to stop because they look awesome. Um, now you do have to torch them one more time to get all the bubbles out. What do we think? Can we see them? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they look really good. Okay, that's it guys. That's how easy that was. What do we think? You like them? Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty color combination. What kind of comments? Beautiful. Beautiful, awesome, love it. So super easy, right? I mean, that wasn't very complicated at all. And um, these will take about 24 hours. You'll be able to like pick them up and, and move them around. Um, 
you are going to have to handle the drips on the bottom. So let me show you how to do that. Um, will you hand me that top one right there? I got it. I can. Okay. So I left this one unfinished on the back to show you guys because this has a lot of uh, drips on it. So let me show you how I took care of it. And I'm gonna have to, um, actually, let me grab the trash. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna heat, I'm gonna heat up this resin and then I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife to basically cut it off, okay? And this is how I did it. I just did my turn. Now you can sand it, but that takes forever and ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, don't take my knife. Okay, so I just heated it up and then took my knife and ran it right across the bottom. It's the it's the Amy redneck way. You know, just don't catch it on fire, right? Um, I've seen people use like a like a box cutter for this, but. This is really easy. Okay, and then you just throw the little things away. Um, now for finishing the bottoms, I see people use uh, cork, uh, which that was, I thought was a great idea but I didn't have any cork here at my studio. Um, I just had the furniture felt pads, so I just used those. And it turned out great. I just painted them black, put the tabs on the bottom, and they were good to go. So that's how you finish them. All right, do you guys have any other questions before we let you go? Process the same one for your tops and countertops. Okay, so for um, furniture and countertops, uh, even for these larger pieces, what we did is we took a um, a putty knife and warmed up, like warmed up the putty knife. As you can see, it's black, and used it to scrape it off. Now, if you're doing a, uh, a counter or a piece of furniture, you can use one of these, like you would do it about an hour after you finished. That way it's not set up yet. Um, these, it would be kind of difficult because you can't grab them in order to do it, but a heavier piece um, of furniture or artwork or a countertop that isn't moving, um, that's what I would do. I would just heat this up, run it up underneath, and it would be all cleaned up. So, any other questions? How do you calculate the amount of resin slash hardener you need for your project? Okay, so you need about 6.4 ounces per square foot total product. So you need like 3.2. I mean, look, you can see I definitely over mixed because um, I have a lot left over. So I, I guess would rather be safe than sorry. Um, I've always just, I've had extra. Could you line the bottom with tape, maybe? <clears throat> well, okay, so I tried that on a piece of furniture, and the tape got stuck underneath the epoxy. 
<laughs> it, it was not pretty. Um, so I did not try that again. But I'm sure I've seen people do it. I'm just not that good yet. I think you would have to pull the tape. Um, the problem with like something small like this is you would need to pull the tape before the epoxy set and you can't pick them up. So it would just be really difficult to do, I think. What is the pieces in the back made out of? Um, so this one is just a round uh, tabletop from Home Depot. I think it was, what, three bucks, four bucks. Uh, the a square piece is a, what is that, three-quarter inch MDF that Doc just cut it and they sanded down the sides for me. Mm -hmm. We have a couple other, I have a couple other practice pieces. You want to hand me that blue one, the blue and white one? Okay. Is the resin countertop safe? Yes. So this is another one I was just playing with. Yeah, and, and uh, I screwed this one up uh, because it was beautiful, it was perfect, it was, I should have stopped and I didn't stop. And then I had all this epoxy that just didn't, uh, didn't work out through here. Like I, uh, and then I decided to make it worse by adding some silver leaf, thinking I could try to salvage it, but it's not salvageable. Yeah, we'll put that. Yeah, <laughs> not my best piece, but it was a, it was a beginner. You know, you, you just learn those things as you go, I guess. What else? Uh, it's, yeah, totally. You can re-pour. Yeah, I can re-pour it. We'll sand it down and I'll, I'll re-pour it. Um, I just have moved on. <laughs> Moved on. We're gonna do furniture this week. We have a uh, a faux marble top that was on a Bombay chest that we're doing this week, and two nightstands. We're going to um, epoxy resin the top. We're actually gonna do the uh, gray, white, and silver, which is which is this. So this one here. This is. Opal, Thunder, and Disco Ball, I think is the color, Disco Ball. There's a couple, so we have like, um, we have Stardust, which is, is like a, it's a shiny silver, but it's got different colors in it. And then there's Stardust, which is like all silver. So that's this one. And the colors again on this one were, Atlantis, Opal, and Opulence is the gold. And then the, um, the round one behind me, this is black, which is uh, Raven, Peacock, which is the uh, teal color, Atlantis, which is the blue, and Opal, did I say that? Opal, Raven, Peacock, and Atlantis. Over a, I, I didn't prime that, um, I didn't prime it very well, which is why the, it kind of looks a little yellow, I think. But. Any other questions before we let you guys go? There's one all the way up at the top. Can you scroll up to get it? That, uh, the mouse doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, end. Um, thank you guys so much for hopping on. I hope that you enjoyed this. I can't wait for these to set up so I can get some good pictures of them because I love them. 
Um, super easy, and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it as well, okay? All right, guys, thank you. See you later. Yeah.